Hello everyone, this is episode 2 of Let's Play 5x5 Craft with Pyrotess, and I have great news. Faldi accepted my offer, although she did bump me up by a diamond block, but that's reasonable. Like she pointed out, this is prime real estate, and I was able to mine those diamonds for her, so 00 is now mine. So this is very good. We're going to be able to build that pyramid I talked about and a nice central road network. Everyone's very excited about that. As you can see, though, I'm going to have a lot of terraforming to do. There's a valley over here, and there's a mountain, and generally this area isn't very flat except over here by the sheep. So I've put out some half slabs to mark where the pyramid is going to go, and you can see that I've got a lot of work cut out for me. So let's get started. Alright, so it's been an hour or two, I've done some digging and laid out half slabs for most, not all, but most of two possible outlines for the pyramid. From the center to this first ring here is a 16 block radius, which gives us a 4 chunk total area, and it's an extra 16 blocks to the second ring over here, which would be 16 chunks total that would be inside the pyramid. I've done 4 chunk bases before and it's a good size, but I think we want to go big here. The problem is that this is the second ring marker here, and as you can see, there's going to be quite a lot of digging required just to fit the pyramid and I'm probably going to need to dig further out just so it's visible, rather than obscured by the mountain on the other side of this one. This is going to be a several episode project. I'm not going to do this all right now, so for now let's put this aside and go build some farms and gather up those sheep and get ourselves established. Come, come sheep. No, no, not you. Get back in the pen. The pen. Come on. There you go. Good sheep. Good sheep. No, no, no. Come back here. Come here, I have food. I'll even feed you if you get in the pen. Come on, that's a good deal, isn't it? Come here, Mr. Sheep. Where are you, a Mrs. Sheep? Or are you one of those transgendered sheep like the cows that have horns? And See, the cows in Minecraft have horns, and they have udders. So I guess everything here is a hermaphrodite, or... No, wait, is that is that the one with two sexes, or is that somebody who's... Ch yeah, hermaphrodite. They're all hermaphrodites. So come, my little hermaphrodites. What's the What's the proper form of address for a hermaphrodite. You can't call them he, you can't call them she. Well, I don't know. Come, little hermaphroditic sheep. Come. Come inside. Come to where the food is. It will make you happy and warm and snuggly. No, no, really. Come on, get in here. Get, get with your friend. Do you not like the other sheep? What is it? Come on. All right. Make, baby, make babies. Yeah, there we go. Good sheep. Okay, light up the base, light up the base. Don't die, don't die. Dying is bad. The sheep would not approve of dying. Be kind to the sheep. For some reason, mob spawning on this server is just out of control. These two creepers? Yeah, okay, let me... Yeah, go ahead, you can kill each other, kill each other. Good creepers. Now, you see these two? Well, there are another four creepers over here, plus spiders and skeletons. I mean, that's six... So yeah, that was six creepers that spawned all right here in this one chunk. It's, I, I don't know, it's bigot or something. It, it's really out of control. I'm not going to kill them. I'm just going to run away. The sheep will keep me safe. Protect me, sheep. Keep me safe. So I've decided that I'm going to build some roads. I don't like sky roads, because you can never find a way on or off the things when you really need to. Instead, I'm just going to put down some half slabs that nothing can spawn on. First option, of course, is basic stone brick. It has the advantage of matching stairs to go with a half slab, but it's really boring. Next, we have smooth stone half slabs, which I really like the color, but there aren't any stair blocks to go with them, so it means that creating a smooth vertical climb, every other step is a spawnable space, which is bad. Plus, as you can see here in the side-by-side -side comparison, you can go up a lot more steeply with stone bricks because there are stairs. Here, we're limited to just those half slabs. Next, we have another brick, which is ugly and red and hard to get, and I'm not going to do that, which just leaves wood. Oak and birch, and this is jungle wood, spruce, and there's some other options there with wood but I really think I'm going to go with the half slabs. I like them. So I've spent a couple days now laying down roads from 0, 0 out to 500 in all directions. It's simple, yes, but with a simple design like this, we can do whatever that strikes us to decorate the path. Here's a little waterfall I added in. Coming up next, we have a bridge with a glass barrier and a decorative spider, apparently. Unlike a sky road, this stays mostly on the ground where you can actually get at it, rather than looking up at all the zombies eating your brains, wishing you were up on a road you can't get to. Next, we have a nice alternating light pattern. These are pumpkins under the half slabs. Rather than come up with an incredibly complicated, 20 unique block design, the plan is to vary it up, but keep with the theme. Three white half slabs and anything else goes. 
And as you can see, even though we haven't lit up this area at all, mobs are spawning all around us, it's still mostly safe, because they don't spawn in front of you. Sure, we'll light it up eventually, but that can come later. We're only a week two, and it's still a little primitive. As long as you keep moving, this is safe. So all we have to do is add nice little rest stops from time to time between stretches of road. For example, like this one, which is actually by far one of the nicer ones that I've made. We have an enchanting table and a brewing stand complete with water. Soon to be a chicken farm. Uh, it hasn't been made quite yet. A cobblestone generator. Tried to make this into a smooth stone generator, but it was a little bit too much effort, so this will have to do. Furnace, bed, chest, and of course one of these. So this is a nice little area north of spawn, and of course we have a portal. Convenient area, access back to the base. All right, back from a hard day of road making. There have been quite a few changes here at the base, so let's give you the tour. First off over here, we have our glorious hole in the ground. Next up, a basic chicken on hopper egg farm. As you can see, we have lots of eggs. Two supply chickens for our Zoomovoid version 2 style chicken cooker. I will give you a link to that below. A snow farm, although it looks like the rain has killed our snowman. Next, we have a bunch of happy, beautiful, glorious, colorful sheep. Yay, sheep. Cows, of course, to supply leather. Basic storage, I'll need to expand that. We have a pig who has escaped. He's supposed to be over there, yeah. Uh, pumpkins, which I think I just destroyed one of. I'll fix that later. Melons behind me. And, of course, carrot, wheat. And speaking of wheat, we have our redstone wheat farm. Let me show you how this works. Flip the switch, hit it, we grab the seed, we replant, and the bone meal dispensers automatically regrow the wheat, although I've found that it hasn't really been worth, very much worthwhile. Next we have some um, redstone that needs to be fixed. Okay, and we've got our sugar cane. This will be for our villagers, which I've already started. In fact, let's go over there now. So as you can see, there's been a lot of work done since last episode. I've started half-slabbing to keep the mobs away, and inside here we have our low-tech villager breeding room. Apologies for the lag. We have four rows of 12 doors each, top and bottom, 48 doors in total, times 0.35, that works out to 16 possible villagers. Back here we have some wheat farms for them, though I've mostly been throwing carrots at them. We only have like five or six villagers so far, but since it's 20 minutes minimum per breeding, that means a couple hours to breed to capacity, and rather than AFKing, I thought we would build an old-style automated wheat farm. Step one is constructing a basic water flow system. We have water here, we have a hopper, we have a chest, and when items go into the water, they follow through the stream into the hopper and end up in the chest. Step two, we create a couple fields and an irrigation channel. We could build as many fields as we want. I went with two, but an important thing to note is that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The reason for that is that water flows eight blocks on flat surfaces, but if it ever drops a level of elevation, it gets another eight. So the first is seven, then it goes down one, then it goes further eight blocks, just enough to push items into our trench and into the hopper. Step three, we put barriers on the side to keep water inside the farm. I went with jack-o'-lanterns for the lighting, and we put in a simple redstone circuit triggered by this lever. Redstone signals travel 15 blocks, so we do need to put in a couple of repeaters. The signals end up at this row of pistons that are facing the farm. We have repeaters delivering the signal to each piston, and please note that the pistons are extended so that we can put water on them. When they retract, water will fall through to flood the farm. And crucial step four to building any wheat farm is discovering that apparently you have a cave system underneath your village with a whole lot of juicy coal and iron. I actually really like coal. I think it's highly underrated. Sure, it's common. There's a lot of it. But I end up using it for torches, for jack-o'-lanterns, and it also has a very nice texture. I'd rather build, if I need black, I'd rather build with coal than wool. I'd actually prefer it over clay, too, because the clay is smooth. Although, I think I'm going to run away now because I've been poisoned and there are way too many mobs and from this server I know from past experience that there are probably two or three creepers just waiting to come out and, and blow me up although it also occurs to me that if I go upstairs there are probably skeletons waiting to snipe me so 
I am just going to build a little hidey hole here in the corner and cover myself in and try not to die. Yeah, dying would be bad. And so after that brief interlude, we have come back to the farm and finished it. We're all done. Though on second thought, you can probably skip that last step. We have half slabs. We have put water on the pistons. Again, do note that the pistons do need to be extended because that is where the water goes for it to come down when they're released. So let's give this thing a test. We come over here. We'll pull the lever. And in theory, the water should all come down. Here it comes. If the this had been planted, all of the seeds and all of the wheat would be coming down. In fact, let's let's test that. Let's toss some stuff. Andesite's fine. Again, pretend that seeds and wheat and carrots, and in theory, all of that should show up in the hopper and end up in the chest. There it is. So our farm is functional. Excellent. Let's turn it off, and of course, the water will recede, and the fields are ready for replanting. So we're back at the rest stop from earlier. Spawn is right at the end of this corridor, and at the end of this corridor is Zero Zero, my base. And as you can see, this section of corridor between the two is really very dull. So I think I am going to take this section right here, and I'm going to dig it out and put a planter with some hidden lighting and some flowers. And so here it is with the pumpkins and the dirt all in place. Now what we're going to do is we're simply going to cover up the pumpkins like so. Next let's take some flowers and decorate it up. So I have a rose bush over here and maybe one over there. Let's put that there. And we take some bone meal and give put in a little grass. And next we'll put in a bit of a black colored roof. Uh, I had to think about this, try a couple of different ways. Eventually I decided to go with wool. Ordinarily I would use coal for something like this since I do prefer the texture, but you can barely see it and wool will work perfectly well. Uh, I've got a little bit that we missed there. Yeah. All right, let me just finish this off. One last little row, and there we go. Another bit. All right. And then finally, all we need here is the last bit of glass to keep people from wandering around inside. This is a closed little planter. I decided to go with blue for the nice little effect that it gives. I'd often use plain glass, but blue adds a nice little touch to this. And there we go. All done. On second thought, there is one last little step we need. Sheep! We started this episode with sheep, and we can end it with sheep. Come on, my little sheep. Come in. You'll be safe and happy in here. It's a nice little home for you. Come on. Come on. Good sheep. Good sheep. But that is all we have time for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please do leave a comment, like, and subscribe. This is Pyrotest signing off. Mm -hmm.